Okay, we continue. And we continue looking down through the criminal code because we have looked at the actions of the politicians in the parliament and recognised multiple criminal offences as we go down this criminal code that the Australian Federal Police are obligated to look into but never actually do. So we speak about them on audio in the hope that Pauline, here we are again, something for you to do, right, so, interference with political rights and duties, one, a person commits an offence if the person engaging conduct and the conduct involves the use of force or violence or intimidation or the making of threats of any kind, this is war, and C, the conduct results in interference with the exercise or performance in Australia by any other person of an Australian democratic or political right or duty. And D, the right or duty arises under the constitution or a law of the Commonwealth. That's a really big problem, isn't it, Pauline? The conduct results in interference with the exercise or performance in Australia by any other person. Now, I, I have this feeling that Albo's interfering with my exercise or performance in Australia of my right to know exactly what he's doing with my constitution, like to the letter, because that's a legal document, right? as a legal political document because that sets in motion politics in the parliament under section 51 of that constitution, Pauline. And the limitations of Albo are in that constitution, aren't they, Pauline? He's the prime minister of the parliament adherent to that constitution, isn't he, Pauline? As are the rest of you. So this conduct that's going on with all the lies about Aboriginal sovereignty and all the lies about Aboriginal history and the manipulation in this Mataraka agreement and the lies that are in an Uluru statement, like flat out lies in an Uluru statement that you're expecting all Australians to accept without standing up in a high court and actually counter arguing that actual statement that was made. Like, that's the irony that you all thought, was that you just walk along and no one was actually legally going to read that document and stand up to you and prove that it was actually a lie. So, this is conduct that results in the interference with the exercise of performance in Australia by any other person of an Australian democratic or political right or duty. It's our political right or and duty to uphold this, isn't it? It is a duty to make sure that you're accountable, and it's our right that he define, being Albanese, define very specifically the change that he wants to make to our legal document on behalf of a power, the Aborigine, that were allowed into our constitution by a foreign occupying power 1st of March 1967. So, these political rights, Pauline, in Australia, is this the continent of Australia or is this the corporation of Australia, this occupying crown under the great seal of Australia? Or is this the Commonwealth of Australia? Uh, these are very confusing things because at D, the right or duty arises under the constitution or law of the Commonwealth. So you need to find, like C is different to D here. 83.4 of the criminal code, if everybody wants to catch up, where, where at 1, 1C, the conduct results in interference with the exercise of performance in Australia. At D, it says the right or duty arises under constitution or law of the Commonwealth. So uh, there are two different things here, Australia versus the Commonwealth. No, the defence in section 80.3 for acts done in good faith applies to this offence. Now, I don't think Albo's done anything in good faith, given that the Greens are involved, and then there's a monetary power b behind Albo, uh, and then Dutton says that there are war parties that are inflicting or affecting the Prime Minister's office. So, imprisonment, three years. Absolute liability applies.
right? Because we're talking about law of the Commonwealth, the actual constitution itself, Pauline. So here again, we go through this criminal code and we can start to look at you in the parliament for all of your actions. And you might say, oh, we have party privilege, political privilege. No, you don't have a privilege over the actual Crimes Act and the criminal code. That, that makes you a criminal. That's very different to being a, a legitimate politician with legitimate qualms related to one's job. No, no, no. Th this is actually a criminal offence, what Elbow's actually done. Okay? He hasn't lined out the very specific word change that he wants to make to a legal document before asking people to go to referendum over it, Pauline. A and then he's made a, a real threat or, as we discussed in one of the other videos, that he he's done this to the referendum, okay? He's, he's attempted to sabotage our referendum, okay? A and at the same time, we haven't even discussed what the states have done behind everyone's back here in the interference of their political rights. We haven't even discussed how the cities of the towns are wasting people's money on the yes vote and how all the states have already given land to the Aborigine before this has even been finalised, Pauline. And you're all in the federal parliament arguing about federal politics without any concern or any oversight over the states whatsoever. Zero. Section 109, Pauline. Right? You got no oversight over the states whatsoever. You just let them wantingly do whatever they do. You know? And these are criminal offences, Pauline. This is a direct, as we said, the conduct results in interference with the exercise or performance in Australia by any other person, being me, of an Australian democratic or political right or duty. You're di denying me the very specific word change to a legal document that you wish to make, which is actually my legal document, not yours. You're the public servant defined in the document, and I'm the naked owner of the document, Pauline. And there's two very different things here. So I ask you very clearly again, if you are an administrator of the Commonwealth of Australia Constitution and you try to undermine the principle, how in any way, shape or form are you able to administer the principle after you've undermined it? Okay, do you change it into something else like a Menzies model republic? This is treason, Pauline. This is a direct act of treason, as already pointed out, and a direct act of sabotage. And it seems to be coming directly out of Prime Minister's office, and this man seems to secretly be not telling any of you while he goes off to Gama and speaks lies on a public stage and accepts the lies of a black population with a disregard for a white population that are standing here and able to walk into the Supreme Court and stand there very clearly with what we know about our naked ownership, our constitution, our foundations, that law and the definition already defined on the Supreme Court of New South Wales. Pauline, that's where we're at. So we, we keep looking at your crimes, we keep looking at your negligence for uh, not knowing these things. As a senator, I, I don't know how you can sit there and not hold these people accountable to the laws they're supposed to uphold. It's just the bottom line. And as a senator, I, I just don't see how you as senators can't get together and hold the House of Representatives to account, which is obviously your job under the Constitution and then at section 44, and then the same section for the Senate. It's ba basically the same wording for both of them. So we can just look at both of them and say, uh, are you negligent at your office, and you've taken an oath to be in said office and have duties to the Crown, and have duties to an administrator, and have duties to uphold the principle in usufruct, and we're watching you destroy that principle, at which then you're left with nothing to administer. So this real stuff, Pauline, and a lot of the country, i.e. everyone else, don't know this stuff, but we walk towards the courtroom on their behalf because they're ignorant, woke people. They're not awake yet. They haven't awakened yet to the fact that there is a collapsing financial system coming their way and they're going to face the brunt of poverty and slavery at the hands of a digitized economy 
which Albo and his WEF partners are bringing upon them. You'll own nothing, remember Pauline, and you'll enjoy it, remember Pauline. And we're talking about usufruct of the Crown here, and we're talking about evidences already put on the Supreme Court of New South Wales court record as to me defining what the hell I know what I'm talking about. You're in dire straits, Pauline, and it's about time you realised these things and started to address them before you make a further mockery of this country and walk yourself into further criminal offences, including war crimes and crimes of an international nature that could see you before the United Nations and The Hague. We, we don't stop, Pauline. This is where we're at. We're going to raise all of these questions with you and ensure that the Australian Federal Police step in and arrest people like Lydia and put her before the criminal courts and then the courts will define whether she's broken the law or not. But I'm telling you that what she did was an act against King via Casement 1917 and is a direct act against Section 80.1 of the Criminal Code and also an act against Section 44 or the equivalent for the Senate in the Constitution. That's where we're at, Pauline. You got choices. You got choices before this all starts becoming more public as the people start to rise and you started to realise that they're capable of doing that in Canberra, right where you are in front of that parliament, lowering a blue ensign and rising a red. These people have had enough, Pauline, and they deserve answers, and you're going to give it to them, Pauline. You're the one that's going to stand up and speak to the population. You're the one that's going to openly and honestly tell them what's going on. We've chosen you. You're the fish and chip shop lady that's supposed to be like them, that turned regal with all the brooches on her badges, and uh, now doesn't act like a fish and chip shop lady. So... You're the one we've chosen, Pauline. You're the one that's going to address the rest of this country over the user crimes and the war crimes that have been outed before the Supreme Court of New South Wales as we further our efforts to walk back into that courtroom, Pauline. All right, everyone. Till next time. <laughs>